artisanal indices. Brace yourselves, this one's a long one. As you can see here, I've got a lovely set of seasonal data. It's very sensibly based on ice cream sales in the thousands. And you can see that within the year, it has a clear up, down, up pattern. Up, down, up, up, down, up. So it's very clearly data with seasonality. Now it also appears to have a nice increasing trend over three years. Seasonal data can have trends that can be hard to see because of this seasonal variation. And we use seasonal indices for a couple of reasons. We might want to smooth our data and just show the long-term increase without the confusing ups and downs. We might want to present our very excellent improvement to our shareholders. Or we might have wanted to make predictions. And if I fit a least squares line of regression to this data, and it won't be perfect because I'm just popping it in somewhere kind of useful. If we make predictions, it's based on this least squares line. None of these predictions on this line are going to be OK. If I wanted to make a prediction for August, it would come up about here. That's not right. We would need to be able to take the prediction that we'd made with this line and compensate for the increase in summer and the decrease in winter. And seasonal indices will let us do that. So this will take a couple of lessons. And um, have a little reminder here, often needs us to remove seasonal variation, which is, of course, smoothing, or replace it to make predictions. And seasonal indices let us do that. Now, this lesson, we will just check. Can we understand the concept of a seasonal index? Can we use a seasonal index to de-seasonalize data? That is, get rid of all this seasonal variation and get it more like what it would be without this variation? And can we use a seasonal index to re-seasonalize data? So we're just looking at the basic skills. We'll learn the whole smoothing thing next lesson. Here is a rough a table. Sorry about the sticky tape there. Um, can I get that? No, I've just got that light there. And we're looking at the actual sales, and I've just taken it roughly from here, in thousands of our ice cream. And these are our seasonal indices. Now, what a seasonal index of 1.2 means is that it's above 1. We think of it like a percentage. It's 20%, 0.2 is 20%, above the monthly average. April, with a seasonal index of 1, is on the monthly average. And July, with a seasonal index of 0.9, is 0.1 or 10% below the monthly average. So you can see that the monthly average here was 60. It's below the monthly average. This one's above the monthly average. Now, <coughs> excuse me. The seasonal index average, all the indices average to 1. So if I added up all the indices and divided by the number that there are, which is 12 for monthly, I would get 1. What that means is monthly adds to 12, because if the average of these 12 is 1, then all 12 of them added up must equal 12. Quarterly would add to 4. Sorry, my writing got dodgy there. I'll fix that. So they've left a gap here just to check that we understand that. When we add up all of these, 
they have to add up to 12. So we can work out Decembers. And all we do is add up all of the seasonal indices. Oops, something terrible happened there. What have I got? Plus 1.1. Plus one plus point nine five. Okay, so I've got ten point nine. If we're not certain, twelve minus ten point nine says that whatever's left for December must be one point one, because they have to add up to twelve for monthly. The meaning of the seasonal index we just tackled, e.g. 1.2 is 20% above average. So December's seasonal index, if we interpret it, says that December's sales were 10% above the monthly average. There we go. Now, our big aims were to be able to de-seasonalize and re-seasonalize data. Okay, we have a formula for this. A deseasonalized figure or amount equals the actual amount or figure divided by the seasonal index. So this is big important formula number one. Notice that we haven't learned how to calculate seasonal indices from data or anything like that. We will get to that, but we're just making sure we understand them and can use them first. So the actual sales for August were 51,000 and the seasonal index is 0 0.85. Find the deseasonalized sales. So they're 15% below the average. Deseasonalized. will be actual divided by SI, seasonal index. The actual sales were 51,000. Now, because we're going back to the data and it's the thousands are over here, we don't need to put the thousands in. And we divide by the seasonal index of 0 0.85. Grab your calculator. So the actual sales were 60. Sorry, the deseasonalized sales, my bad, was 60. That is, without all the variation, they would have sold 60,000. But with the variation, it was lower because it was in winter. Now, the big thing about uh, the, this example is that we normally look over several years to get these indices, whereas I've just sneaked this in for one year. So it will look a little bit funny. We'll keep getting the same numbers here and there. But when we work out the seasonal indices over many years, we'll get a lot more variation. Re-seasonalizing data, the de-seasonalized sales for October totaled 60,000. What were the actual sales? The formula for re-seasonalizing data, the actual figure equals the de-seasonalized number, I'm running out of space, times the seasonal index. And there's our second important formula there. 
So our actual sales was 60 times the seasonal index. Now that's for October. And October has a seasonal index of 0.9. Grab our calculator. So the actual sales were 54,000. And we say that 1,000 is there. So we can use these formulae to de-seasonalize or re-seasonalize data. Now it's just worth noting, if the seasonal index in January is 1.2, sure that means January's score of 72,000 is 20% above the mean, but it doesn't mean that we take off 20% of 72 to get back to de-seasonalized data because this was 20% of the average, not 20% of this. If I found 20% of 72, that's about 14. If I took that off, I'd get about 58, and that's wrong. What I need to know is by what percentage do we reduce January sales of 72,000 to deseasonalize? Now remember my deseasonalized data is the actual divided by the seasonal index. And if we look at a fraction like this, well that actually means the actual times one over the seasonal index and this is the percentage we want because a fraction times an amount that's a percentage as a decimal so 1 over 1.2 is about 0.83 so we want 83% of this as our deseasonalized data. The difference there, of course, we want to reduce it by how much? Well, 83% means we've reduced by what's left out of 100 by 17%. So it's just not going to come up too often, but we've just got to be aware that being 20% over doesn't mean dock 20% of this. We'd have to actually work out the percentage as one over the seasonal index and then how much we go up or down by to get to it. Next lesson, taking a few years worth of data, preferably from a table, to calculate the overall seasonal indices for the, the months, so taking into account all the years, and then using those to smooth our data.